think living that bougie lifestyle is out of reach for your budget? Think again. With our system, it's not just a dream, y'all. It's real life. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Let's flip the script on budgeting. We're going to transform it from a chore into your ticket to living the lifestyle that you desire with peace and without the guilt that or the nagging that's always running in the back of your mind. Yeah, guys. So join us as we teach you the 12 rules of living that bougie on a budget lifestyle. All right. We're going to get into it. We've got a lot to get through and we're not short winded. We're made, uh, made to talk. <laughs> I, I remember one time we went to like our first conference and they were like, do you want a microphone? And I was like, oh, you don't want to give us the microphone. Mm, now you're going to regret We're that. already very loud. So with that being said, we're going to get through these 12 as quickly as we can. Okay. Otherwise, this will be a 12-hour documentary. It will. But I do want to say the living this lifestyle you desire with peace and without guilt. I want to say that we hear that all the time. When people come to us and say, I just want to be at peace. I just want to be without guilt. That's what we just continuously mm -hmm. hear. And we just want to show you how to get there. Yeah. You guys, what you're doing is you're funding it right now, most of the things, but you have guilt and you're not at peace and you're feeling anxious and you don't know what's going on and yeah. you don't feel confident. So we want to fund it out those feelings we want to find it on purpose and let and let you feel confident and know that you have the money when you need the money how you need the money all those things all right so the first rule here is to pick what you want to be bougie about yes okay you can't be bougie unless you're i don't know elon musk or something you can't be bougie on every yeah. single budget line item okay what you want to do is figure out what's important to you and what's really fun and we see it with our clients is everybody has different things maybe you want to be bougie with your garden like my daughter's friend has the her mom has the most amazing garden. You can tell she spends oh, a lot of money on it. She's, you just have to test it for acid. I'm like, I don't think you know me very well yet. <laughs> anyway, so they probably spend a lot more money on their garden, but like, that is never going to be mine. I'm not, I'm going to be bougie on not having a garden. Okay. Over here. But that's just a fun example. But obviously vacation, sports, mm -hmm. maybe your home life is more important. Maybe you like you, I don't know, your car is more important. Whatever you want to be, your personal care, your, your glam up. Everybody has different things that they want to be bougie about. Okay. And you can choose yours. Yeah, I mean, we recently did a podcast on this. It's, there's a give and take. You ask any millionaire, I love to say this, but they didn't become a millionaire on accident. It wasn't they woke up and they're like, oh, oops, I accidentally became a millionaire. No, it was strategically planned. And it was because they knew what was important to them. Mm -hmm. They spent money on the things that mattered to them. And they didn't spend money on things that they didn't want to spend money on. And they were able to save in those areas, which allow you to spend money on other things that are, that, that do matter. And so what when you're, Picking what you want to be bougie about in your budget, you also, by definition, are picking what you do not want to be bougie about. Mm -hmm. And for you guys that listen to us, we know you don't want to, you don't really care about TV most of the time, yeah. right? Let's get that cable, huge cable bill out of the way. I don't actually want all of these subscriptions that I'm paying. Actually, when I really get down to it, I don't want to eat out that much. I want to be bougie and go on vacations. I want to be bougie and be there for travel, baseball, or whatever. Right. That's what you want to be. So you go in there and you decide, I don't, this is not important for me to spend this much money on. That's you're also making that choice. Exactly. All right. So number two is you make too much money to use credit. That's right. We have said that again and again to clients. And now you're going to accept that as a rule for your bougie and a budget lifestyle. I make too much money. I don't use credit cards. Mm -hmm. I have enough money to pay for everything that I want in cash. I don't use credit card because I am too fancy for that. Too fabulous. Yeah. And, and that's what you want to remember when you make this good money. When you guys have all this amazing income come in, we have a lot of people that start off working with us that are using credit because they're unsure, using credit because they just don't know. And once we show them how much money they actually yeah. have in their budget, they're like, oh, I didn't need to use it at all. Yeah. And I'm actually making more money in quote unquote credit card points if I just had my money sitting in a money market. Yeah. I had a lady message me and she said, I just made $600 because my money was sitting in a high yield say, a money market versus whatever credit card points I was going to get that month. She's like, that was mind blowing for us. So do not use credit. Don't go into debt. You make too much money. And the other, the flip side of this is in the beginning, of course, you're going to budget and you're going to learn that you don't need to use credit cards because you have cash. But eventually you're going to have so much money. You don't need, if you have a thousand dollar purchase, you just will use the thousand dollars that you've saved. You will not right. use credit cards. And also if you have debt, we're not shaming you. Like we understand, we get it, but you're going to get out of it. And all those, how about money that you're spending yeah. on minimum payments each month? Or think about all that you're going to have in cash yeah. someday. So we're just saying don't go further into debt. Yeah, and bougie on a, on a live, uh, bougie on a budget lifestyle is about no longer using credit mm -hmm. cards. So yeah, you might have a minute till you're completely out of debt. That's fine. We get that. But while we're on that journey, we're also not going to use them anymore. And yeah. that way we can actually get to that, like Vanessa said, get to that place where we don't have any of those minimum payments. Okay, number three rule, the third rule for being for that bougie on a budget lifestyle is your bills are optimized. 
let me tell you how much money you guys will save if you do what we say, which is go through, get everything on one page, find all the bills that are duplicates, all the subscriptions that are duplicates, get all of the rates, go through and, and shop for the best rates for internet, for cable, for insurance, for everything that's on your budget. You will save hundreds, if not more, dollars a month, maybe a year, thousands, all kinds of money if you just optimize your bills. Just had a client. She saved $1,500 on her six-month auto plan, which means she was saving, she'll save $3,000 for the year mm -hmm. because she requoted. Okay. Mm -hmm. So go through. We have so many clients that didn't know I had double Netflix subscriptions, didn't know I was playing, paying twice for Hulu and different things. Go through, figure out, do the 90-day review, figure out what you're spending your money on, optimize it like Shana said, and then you can feel really good about your bills. Absolutely. Number four rule for that bougie on a budget lifestyle is your head is no longer in the sand, right? When you guys come to us, when we're when you're first dipping your toe mm -hmm. in this water of budgeting, you're like, I'm not looking at it. It's it's just happening, and I'm looking over here, right. and therefore it's that. fine. It seems fine. No, the bougie on a budget lifestyle person is looking at it. They have ownership. They're they know everything that's going on, and they're so like proud and in control and confident of their budget. Yeah, nothing is a surprise. Yeah. Okay, so you know exactly where your money is going, when it's going, why it's going, how it's going. Like you are very on yeah. top of it and your head is not in the sand. Right. You're very proud to be in control mm -hmm. of your money. Okay, yeah. so that's what we're saying. This is the new you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're just no longer afraid to look at the numbers. Mm -hmm. You're not afraid to look at the numbers. You're not ducking out away from it because what's going on, you're confident to always look at them as much as you need to. All right, what about the number five rule? Number five is you are spending money on purpose. There's no more frivolous spending and we just swipe here to swipe there. No, you are only spending money on things that you want to spend money on. And it's on purpose mm -hmm. because you've set a budget. All How many of our people come in and they say, oh, I spend so much money, I spend so much money. When we set them on a budget, we put them, we separate the bills and the spending. Maybe they get uh, cash envelopes or they yeah. just have their envelope or their digital envelope. They stop spending so much because now they immediately, <laughs> even though they might have been big spenders, they might have been shopping every weekend or Amazoning every day. Every time it doesn't fail, their spending goes down because now they, one, know what they have to spend. They know that they can spend. And then on the flip side, we'll talk about they have other things that they're more excited to, to to spend their money on than just frivolous stuff. Yeah, and everything is uh, categorized. It's mm -hmm. not complicated. And I had a, a free call with a, a couple the other day. They said, we make so much money and it's all gone at the end of the month, right? Just They have no idea where it's going. Instead of, like with our clients, they know exactly where their money is going and they're proud of it. They're happy. They feel good. They don't mm -hmm. feel restricted. And they know that they're also saving. It's just all a very well-oiled machine. Yes, love that. Okay, number six. You are more excited to save money than spend money. This is the difference. I, I think a lot of times, Vanessa, see if you agree with me. People are so anxious and they're just caught up in this cycle that they are spending money and like almost as a as an overflow of that anxiety. But once they stop, they pause, they look at everything on hold. We ask them, what are your goals? What is your vision? Then all of a sudden they get really excited about saving money. Mm -hmm rather than spending it. Because it's being saved on purpose for something specific, right? So Better than the dollar, their Starbucks. Yeah. Exactly. They get more excited about saving for the big things instead of just swiping here and there mm -hmm. at Walmart or Starbucks or wherever you are. I had a lady one time and I told her, I said, look, you're on like step two. So the first step was paying off all your debt. The second step is now saving. Mm -hmm. Is that You have to learn to be a saver, mm -hmm. which is something that she's never been able to do because they've never had the money to do yeah. it because they were always paying off debt. Yeah. And now they had all this extra money and they were able to save it. And it actually took her a minute to go, oh, I don't have to spend it or I can. It just it was a whole mindset shift. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing that I love, and you will do this if you get our signature budget system or you get do coaching with us or group coaching, you'll, it'll be the same thing. Once you get through and get a lot of our system implemented, you'll start to see money piling up all over yeah. the place. We, uh, one of the first things that we do on a session and what you should do when you go to wrap up your monthly budget is look at your account, see what's all there. Just make sure everything is, see updated amounts and stuff and look at how much money you have in all of these different accounts. It's so much fun. Yes. I have a lady that she'll be graduated here soon and she is excited to come on and give her testimony about that because she, the amount of money that she's saving each month also, and she's paying off on debt, mm -hmm. like it's phenomenal. And she herself still can't believe that it's true. And yeah. I just love it. Yeah. And so we'll just to make it really real, we'll be like, okay, what's in the bills account? What's in your spending account? What's in your travel account? What's in your kids account? What's in your medical account? What's in your annual bills? And all of these accounts, you guys, they have money mm -hmm. in them and some of them a lot of money. And it's really exciting to see that you have money and you're covered. And that's why it's so much easier to not spend money because you know that you are, you're actually saving it. Sometimes when it's all a mess, 
you're like, I might as well spend it because it's going to go somewhere. It's going to be right. gone anyway. I might as well spend it on purpose on Amazon. But when you start to see it all stack up, it just changes everything. It really does. So this one goes along with rule number seven is now you have a lot of bank accounts. Yes, girl. <laughs> okay. So you're more excited to save than spend. And where are you putting all that money? Oh, you're opening up separate bank accounts mm -hmm. and even high yield savings accounts if you want. And you're saving all of this money in there. Yep. And it's just that simple. You just, maybe you've named them something fun. We're all for that. Mm -hmm. But if you're living this vision on a budget lifestyle, you don't have time to do math in your head. No, your bank accounts do the math for you. They tell you how much money you have, how much money you still have to spend, how much yeah. money you have saved up for whatever, what bills have already been paid. It's doing all that for you because you're too bougie for that. You don't get time for that, okay? Yeah, your life is too great. All right, number eight, you are not afraid to say no. So we, how many, we just had a conversation this morning with the mom. Of, I don't want to say no. He, I need to let him do all the things for sports. And they're like, oh, do you? Ask you. But you're not afraid to say no because there are just some things that are a priority. And you know that. And you're not afraid to say no because you have a lot of other cool stuff going on. That's what I was just going to say. That the no that you're saying is because of the yes that you're going to mm -hmm. say later on. Yeah. Like you can see that you're saving for this massive trip to Europe or you're saving for your kid to go to this amazing baseball camp this summer or something like that is what's really important to you and your family. And so saying no now to the everyday little things here and there that add up quite quickly. Yeah. By saying no to all that, you can say yes to that. And that feels really good. And this actually goes along with the next one, which <laughs> is you're not afraid to say yes. So many times you might say yes, but you're still afraid. And you're like, I don't know if I have the money later. Or you might automatically just be like, I can't do this. And one, of, one example I have is one of our earliest clients she wanted to sign up for a yoga certification. And she's like, I really can't afford it. And I was like, girl, you, you can afford it. I don't know if you just paid off your car. You have no more debt. You have all of this money because they're very, they were very bougie on purpose on certain things and very frugal on other things. And I said, you have the money. Just pay for it. But she had still identified as someone who didn't have money or had to say no. And it was like, no, it's okay to say yes. You did the work to get here. And now if this is truly important, again, going back to the first rule, you, what you value, if this is something that's really going to, further your your you in what other whatever way that you value then you can say yes mm -hmm. i love that and i was just thinking this is my yes era yeah <laughs> you know like this is a chance for you to say yes for things that you've always wanted to say mm -hmm. yes to yep. or shana said maybe you've said yes in the past but you haven't felt good about saying right. yes because you, you put it on credit for your kids and nobody actually knew that yep and so now you can say yes and pay cash for it and yep. feel good and know that it's planned and i think that's such a good point vanessa is we have done work, all of us, to get to this point in our life where we're maybe making more money than we used to, mm -hmm. where we've gotten out of debt, where we're being frugal, like we said, on certain things. And then we can be bougie. You can order the really fancy, really grass-fed sun kumbaya to meat if you want. Massage. Yeah, yeah. And you can pay for that. And you can say yes if you want. Versus 20 years, 10 years ago, Vanessa and Shane went, no, we can't afford that. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's a hard no. But now we can say yes to travel sports or these vacations or whatever these things that now we can we don't have to be afraid to say yes because we did the work to get to this point absolutely all right rule number 10 you look forward to talking with your family about money listen yes money can be so taboo so many clients come to us where it's a point of contention either with their kids because they don't want to say no or they're afraid or with their spouse because they just don't agree they don't see eye to eye now that you've gotten your system in place now that what's happening you are looking forward. Let's have a budget meeting. Let's talk about this. Look at all, look at how well it's going. Or I'm I'm excited because I understand the numbers. So now I can truly explain them to you as well. Yeah, I think that's it too. And I would say, we would say, bring the kids in on the conversation. Mm -hmm. They don't need to see all the numbers, but show them the numbers that are important. Show them how much y'all spend on groceries. So much, show them how much you spend on going out to eat. Show them how much you spend on gas. Show them how much their sports cost them. Show them how much the vacation. It is okay to have these conversations. But you just have to remember the, the, your tone and your vocabulary in it all. And it's never a scarcity mindset. It is a, hey, this is what we are choosing to do as a family. This is what we're choosing to spend my on because it's important to us. But I want you guys to know that this is what we're doing to make it happen. And this is what we get. We need to be all in together and say yes together. And so I just think that's really good. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Rule number 11. You are your own bank. Now, listen, this is so next level, but we love it because Sometimes people will be like, I guess I'm going to have to put that on a credit card or I guess I'm going to have to figure out how to ask somebody or the bank or somebody for money to pay for something. But you're going to be your own bank. Step one, like we said, you're going to get on a budget. You're going to get consistent. You're going to do a good job. Then you're going to get out of debt, hopefully. You have more money and then you have money piling up and you can be like, oh, 
if I need a new air conditioner, I will just mm-hmm. borrow money from myself because I have it. Right. And I, I just had a call with this lady and she has pet insurance. Okay. And so we are very against a lot of types of insurance. We know that we want you to have the best kind and the ones that matter the most to you. But I said, what if you became your own bank with that? Like, what if you took this money that you're paying for pet insurance, Mm -hmm. put it in a high yield savings account, still funded it every month like you were paying for pet insurance, but now you're funding yourself and you became your own bank. And she was like, I never thought about it like that before. So I thought you can now fund your annual visits for your pet. Their shots, their heartworm, their flea worm, and also you can put a little buffer for emergency right? pets on here. Like it is this. You, this is how you become your own bank for vacations, for medical situations, mm-hmm. for your animal, for home stuff, for your vehicle. Like saving this money every month is such a game changer. Absolutely. All right, and number twelve, we love this, and this is so the heart of everybody who listens to this, all the people that we get to work with and talk to, is that you give generously when and how you want and. It goes along with that, being able to say yes. If I see a need or if I want to just bless somebody or or some organization or some circumstance, I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of the people that we speak to say, I want to be able to give. That is very big on their heart. That's how you were made. So we know that it is important to you. It's important to a lot of our listeners. And we want to help you get there. Being in charge of your finances, by being on top of it, by not having your head in the sand, by knowing your numbers, you're able to give. Like Shana said, how and when you want. Those were the 12 rules for that bougie on a budget lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope that you understand and take away from this that we believe that this is possible for you. And we want you to believe that this is possible for you, right? Yes. So guys, listen, we want you to get on a budget. Obviously, ours is amazing. You're going to love it. It's not only bougie. It's beautiful. Okay. It is organized. It's easy. It takes all the math out of it. But get on our budget system, either the one-page template that is free or the signature budget template, you won't regret it. Yeah, use this podcast, listen, do it, implement it, and become this bougie on a budget lifestyle kind of person that we're talking about. Step into that person today. Absolutely.